14.8, which is x, xx times, well, you, I just do the parentheses because x's get confused when you're doing statistics sometimes, and then 60. And so you plug it all in the calculator, right? And you do um, 14.8 times 60, and then you do 529 divided by, and you get 0 0.5957, which should be an I squared. It might vary a little bit depending on how you round, but you should get approximately this number. And hopefully you guys got just that. That should be the answer for I squared. That was a whole lot, right? Um, you just need to get really fast at doing this. I think this took me maybe, it took me a little bit of time, maybe six or seven minutes. It should take you around the same amount of time. Hopefully, just just be careful when you're doing it so you're not making any mistakes. It will take a little bit of time, just depending on how much. Um, but top to bottom of the page, hopefully you can get that quick. Okay, so we did all of that like, um, and so let's go through the answers that we got. So the Pearson correlation that we got, or the R that we got was 0 0.007, approximately, something like that. The actual number I got completely was 0 .0 0 0.77385. And then the correlation coefficient, or R squared, that we got was 0 0.5957. And then draw and determine the relationship, which I already did for you guys. It looked something like, something like, oh my gosh, something like that. A little bit different, but something like that. So it's a positive, strong relationship, which we already went through. So why do, what does Y hat mean? And you guys should remember this in class. It's just the predicted value of y. Don't get that confused because it will confuse you later on. Okay, so what is y hat if x is 7? So how do you calculate y hat, which is the predicted value of y, if x is 7? So we can go ahead and do that right now. I think I did it here. I hope you guys can see. Um, I hope you guys can see. So, um, what you have to do is you just, you have to find the formula first. You have to find, so basically before you can do uh, the question number um, 22, you will have to do 23. So how do we find the formula? We have to find, so we know what the formula is, right? The formula is equal to y equals to uh, a plus bx, right? So to, so to find this formula, we have to do, we have to find b, which is a s, x, y, um, which we already calculated early, so that's good. We calculated SXY to be, in the last problem, to be 14, no, sorry, SXY to be 23, and SXX to be 14.8. And so simply, we just have to divide it here, and we get 1.55. And we know B is a slope, so 1.55 is a slope. That was really easy, simply because we did all that work before. Okay, great. Next. A. All we have to do is take the y bar, which is the mean of y, and subtract it by b times the mean of x. And simplified, we just take the sum of y divided by n minus b times the sum of x minus n. I mean divided by n. So that is 25, because the sum of x we calculated early to be 25, divided by n, n is 5 times 1 point minus times minus 1.55 times 19 which is the 
uh, sum of x divided by 5, which is the n, times b, and we just do that. You guys hopefully will see where all those numbers are coming from by this point. Um, hopefully you guys see that. And so 25 divided by 5, obviously 5. 19 divided by four, 5 divided times 1.55 is 5.89. And then I also, if you did round differently than me, I did account for that. So you could have got 1.544 for the slope over here if you added that extra number. And then you would have gotten an you would have gotten a to be um, negative point zero five. So it depends on how you rounded. Um, if I only went to two decimals here, but I know you guys go to four, so uh, but I did account for that over here. So if you did it my way and you only went to two decimals, you would have got negative point eight nine. If you went further then you would have got something closer to negative 0 0.905. So the formula for, that I got doing it my way was negative 0 0.89 plus 1.55x. So because it's a slope, we put x over here. Okay, so now number 23 is done. This is the answer to number 23. Okay, that will be confusing, but 23, that's the answer to it. Um... 22 to calculate that we just the predicted remember we went over that the predicted value of y um, hat is this so we just plug 7 in with x is right there and when you plug 7 in you do 1.55 times 7 plus um, negative 0.89 or 0.8 negative 0.89 plus whatever you get here and you get 0 0.9.96 so that's the answer to 24. Um, I believe it's 24, right? No, sorry. The answer, you get the answer for number 22 there. So this is the answer to number 22. So number 24, I thought we'd do that together. You guys should know the formula of the residual by now. So what is the residual? So the residual is this difference between the value that you see on the line Right? So when you're doing the graph, that's uh, the y that you see on the line. So the dot that you'd see, like, well, let's say this is um, if x was 6, the value you'd see that corresponds with that would be the value of the line, right? And then the residual would be equal to the that value that you see minus the predicted value. And that would be the residual. Okay. So, this should be pretty easy to calculate for you guys. So you do the same thing that you did before. Where you, oh. That we've been doing before. Sorry guys that we've been doing before where we go, um, we take the value of six because we already calculated it. That's why I gave you the value of six. So the value of six would be 10. And then we have to calculate because we see in this, uh, where's my original sheet that I can show you guys. We see that the value of X of six corresponds to the value of y of 10. So the actual y is equal to 10. And then we minus by the y hat. And how do we calculate the y hat the same way we did here? We do 1.55 times 6. And we get 9.3. And then we do, well, you can just subtract, but I'm going to do it the way the formula says, just for, so you guys get it. And we should get 8.4441 y hat for 6 if x equals to 6. So then you get 10 minus 8.41, 1.59. That should be a residual. Okay? 
I suggest you know that the residual is y minus y hat because if you confuse that for the test, that won't be good. You guys know how to do that. So I'm not going to write out number um, 25 and 26 because it's pretty... Um, we just covered in class and hopefully you guys understand how to do it, especially since um, we did it so many times. It will be on the NCQ for you guys. You guys should know how to do that um, just for the sake of not having to write all that out. It'll be on the answer key. Me writing it out is not gonna, you know, be any more beneficial than you guys seeing it on the answer key. It's just all the possible options of a six-sided die rolled two times. Um, yeah, we did that exact same thing in class, so I hope, hope you guys get it. Eight-sided die is the same kind of deal, except it has eight sides. So instead of stopping at like six-six, it would go all the way up to. 8, 8. Um, yeah. So, the same thing. The A, Union, B, it's just every single answer choice. It's every single combination of these two sample spaces. So, it would be everything in sample space A and everything in sample space B. And number 28 and... So and is just referring to everything that is in both. So it'd be everything in sample space uh, A would be the answer, basically. Um, hopefully you guys get that. Um, okay, 29. So this one is the same thing. You need to know that union and this and calculating probability is pretty easy. So... Um, you need to count them up basically, so you basically need to calculate an n. So let's just do that right now. 15 plus 26 plus 4 plus 1 plus 6 plus 12 equals 64. So we have 64 here. And we need to calculate the probability of seeing option choice 1, which is um, 26. And I can see I made a mistake here. I should have put, you know, E equals to 0. So the final copy that I sent you guys out will have that accounted for. Well, I'll just make the 6. Okay, but I'm going to expect you guys to follow what I put here. So E1, which is 26 plus, because it's a union, so you have to do a plus basically, uh, all the options in 30, which is 1, would be 27 divided by 64. Basically, I'm just going to round to 30 over here. Um, so probability of just 5. So 5 is just 12 cars. So 12 divided by 64. And that would give us 0.1875. Pretty simple. Um, and this one, so all the probabilities of the second one and the fourth and the fourth one which would be impossible because no color is green and red right so that's pretty much it for this hopefully this helped you guys i know it's extremely long but Hopefully you guys just skipped around and found what you needed, and yeah, I hope it helped you guys just practice all you can. Um, if you found any ears in what I did, or have any questions about it, or something like that, just shoot me an email, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, good luck practicing, happy studying, and good luck to you guys. Bye-bye.